I just read a book that was quite similar to your book, which was called Bunker Hill by Nathan Philbrick, and it was a history of yes. 1775 and 76, basically, how the American Revolution started. And I was sort of struck by the fact that the committees of correspondence were a little bit like Facebook, and Paul Revere was like Twitter, and he had about 100 characters left over <laughs> after his ride, and William Dawes. But, uh, but the, you know, and he could go on. I mean, even the uh, Hutchinson's letters are a bit like WikiLeaks, so the, nothing can say secret. But what struck me was the revolution was started by people who had these social networks, but it was taken over very quickly by militias who were a bit out of control. I mean, Lexington and Concord was not what they expected. And that those who put their bodies on the line end up taking over revolutions that are started uh, by social networks. Is that still true? Well, I think part of it, it's interesting you mention this because we, we throw around the term cyber dissident um, and we, we apply it to like anybody who tweets. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the, to me, the term dissident still implies somebody who's willing to assume some degree of risk in the physical world. And I think the lumping together of everybody in cyberspace who opposes a regime as a cyber dissident, in some respects, does disservice to uh, real opposition groups. I think that you know, we, were, we were in Libya, uh, I guess it was a, about a year ago, um, and our observation is, where's the police? <laughs> where's the army? This entire place seems to be run by militias who, you know, uh, you know in uh, one catalytic moment can, you know, essentially turn this whole thing upside down. And, of course, that, that, that when happened. We, were, <coughs> we visited one of the ministries in Libya, and we were told that, that it was really good that we didn't come there the, the day before because the m militia that had supported that director of that, of that thing had been overthrown by the other militia and had installed a different you know, vice president in charge of health. Right. And then an, the previous militia formed with another militia to then attack the first militia to put the person we were meeting with back in power. I mean, this is the reality um, of the sort of militia-led groups. What I like about what Jared said about these dissidents is there are, there's always people of courage. When we went to China right after North Korea, we heard that Chinese, for whatever reason in their culture, don't seem to have a lot of sort of people, you know, Tiananmen Square kinds of things. They're so brutally repressed, uh, and people still remember that. But people are unwilling to have their children be killed by environmental pollution and that the current environmental movement is a much deeper threat to the legitimacy mm -hmm. of the government than we as Americans might think. That in particular, people are sort of willing to put up with the corruption and the craziness and the lack of democracy, but they are willing to take pictures of the environment at tremendous personal risk against the secret police, because of course the internet has perfect memory, because they're terrified their families are being killed. They have one child, that child is everything in their culture.